So I thought I'd go outside today to talk about something I've really been spending a lot of time on in these last few weeks. Initially, it was all about cognitive decline. You know, what's necessary to reverse cognitive decline if it hasn't gone too far? And I did PowerPoints on it, did presentations, but it's just good to sort of like summarize it, to put it in conversational terms. And I do believe there are three levels. You need to really work at getting into ketosis. So that means you got to drop your carbs. None of this is going to work if you're in a, a high carb diet, a high refined carb diet. The standard American diet is just not going to work. You can address it, but it's really building your house on sifting sands, as the cliche goes. So. Ketosis is really important, getting there, whether it's a ketogenic diet or whether you're using MCT oil or perish the thought, whether you're using ketone salts or exogenous, other sorts of exogenous ketones. That has to be the fundamental layer. You have to build on top of that. So for this, I was about to leave that topic, you know, and just move on to other things and say, well, now we got to get into the other two layers of reversing cognitive decline. Eager to do that. But I thought, you know, I think I'm being kind of superficial in hitting ketosis as much as this is this channel is Keto Naturopath and a podcast is Keto Naturopath. I thought that I really needed to go back and to look more deeply. So I discovered really around 2000, the world of research specific to MCT oil and then specific to caprylic acid triglyceride tend to rip open. So I mentioned um, a guy named Samuel Henderson he was at the, uh, he was a PhD in genetics at the University of Colorado in Boulder. And now he's the chief science officer at uh, ACERA some 22 years later. But he was the first to look back retrospectively from the 60s, grabbing information from the late 50s to 60s into the 70s about MCT oil relative to epilepsy. If I get distracted every so often, it's because some, some really interesting birds are flying overhead. Um, it's an amazing area to live in. This is Eastern North Carolina. To interrupt just for a second there, you know, if you go directly east from here, maybe 30 miles as a crow flies, you will come to an island called Ocracoke. And Ocracoke was the, out, the last outpost for Blackbeard the pirate. And Blackbeard the pirate's an interesting guy. He, died at, I think it was 38, he was killed. But also if you go 20 miles exactly north, you come to the very first town in North Carolina. It was obviously a British outpost and then kind of the local capital. And that was Bath, North Carolina. In fact, Blackbeard the pirate, he quit pirating. He tried to have a normal life with his 14th wife. And he did that for a number of years and he couldn't do it anymore. He had to go back to pirating and eventually got killed. But his camp was in Ocracoke, which is an island. You can get there by ferry only. And Bath is uh, pretty much now in the backwoods. I mean, it's still a town, but time has moved on. Okay, so there you go. So leveraging ketones for neurological diseases is really what I stumbled into. And I started looking at patents and other sources of information that could give me the history. And I realized, I had covered some of this before on a podcast and some of the videos, is that the MCT oil was primarily all around the ketogenic diet for epilepsy, done. Epilepsy obviously is a cerebral um, concern, it's a brain concern, it's a metabolism concern. But things didn't grow much from there. It was just about epilepsy and the ketogenic diet and it sort of worked for some and it didn't work for others so they had to go on to medications. But the medications had terrible side effects. So Dr. Samuel Henderson, started looking at the MCT oil. Studies were coming out in the mid 80s and they're certainly into the 90s about saying, you know, and I'm just going to give you some highlights in some of this. It's like uh, 1984, Cornell Medical School said Alzheimer's disease and metabolic systems degeneration. Okay. And then in 1994 in Basel, Germany, it was like changes in brain glucose metabolism, key to pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. So they're talking about dementia in general, but now they're hitting the nail on the head. So he goes, wait a minute, MCT, uh, glucose, I think we can flip it. We can, in essence, market, advertise, use. And the only thing they had in their hands at that point was medium chain triglycerides, which are primarily C8 and C10. It's coconut oil loosely, but it's a little more refined and C8 is more refined than that. 
So we started using it and patented it. And the thing is with MCT oil, you can't patent it. It's anybody can have it. It's like, you can't patent a coconut. You can't patent coconut oil. But what he did is he patented MCT oil that, with adding a few things saying, hey, no, this is medication for Alzheimer's and then medication for all dementia and then medication for a lot of neurological issues. L just listen to this. The, the list is obviously age associated memory impairment, call it cognitive decline, right? Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, of course. Did you know if you give just MCT oil, c 8 is better, but MCT oil, if somebody has Parkinson's, you will stop their tremors immediately. Suddenly they have this normal life. It's like this window. They can get up and walk away without the tremor and everything else. It doesn't last forever. It lasts for a little while. And so therefore you need to have a better, you know, a better form to have these so they can have it for a longer period of time. And uh, the Michael J. Fox Association is now looking into various forms of ketones. I don't mean just exogenous, but including kind of the MCT approach to treating Parkinson's. So now it's cutting edge. It was loosely mentioned in the 60s and 70s, brought up then in a patented, I think it was 2003, but the research was done in 2000 with uh, Dr. Henderson when he was at the university. Now 30 patents later in 2022, they're all around MCT oil, more specifically C8, and Dr. Stephen Kinane up at Sherbrooke University in Quebec also has done probably the most really interesting studies of the last few years. So for me, I didn't hear about any of this until maybe I got, until I got really sick and needed to look at as an alternative. So I was starting to look in 2012 and 13, didn't really start to understand ketosis until 2014. The conferences started in 2016. I thought, wow, this is a whole new thing. Well, no, it's not a whole new thing. And I have to stop due to a plane flying over. So it's become much more refined and certainly there's a def definite line of breadcrumbs. But listen to some of these others. I talked about Parkinson's, Frederick's ataxia, GLUT1 deficiency epilepsy. They can't take in glucose because the receptors are, are broken. There's mutations for that. The coronary arterial bypass graft dementia. Who would have thought of that? But ketones after surgery, there actually is a thing of having dementia for, it's on an average of five to seven years after the most popular heart surgery in the world, by the way, more so than stents. And so that will wipe that out in, in terms of improving it. What about uh, anesthesia induced memory loss? Same. Huntington's disease used to be referred to as, uh, as Huntington's chorea, but it's, it's bigger than that. Pick's disease, MS, ALS, McCurdle's disease, which is a glycogen storage. So anyways, what we're doing is we're now taking ketones, it, ketones as in the ketogenic diet, I'm preferring to look at the, the natural approach. This isn't something you have to go out and buy. You can do it right in your kitchen right now. It's easier with things like if you add in MCT oil, we have it in our kitchen as well, um, but you don't, you're not dependent on it. It's just a condiment you put into your food. We're really talking about dropping the carbs, not even having a high fat, maybe initially. But look at all the improvement. Let's take one, um, Parkinson's. Amazing that Parkinson's has this dramatic change. What about something like, um, you've never heard of McCurdle's disease. It's a glycogen storage disease in which these people don't have access to their glycogen. So when you eat and you take in your glucose, you store it into glycogen, primarily your liver, and then in your muscles. And then that's great. That allows you mobility. You can go run up a hill, you can take a walk and so on and so forth, but people, with this issue, they can't access what they stored. So if they go walk up a hill, they have to stop and, and let the, their metabolism, which is very slow, to catch up. So now when they're on a ketogenic diet, they're not dependent on the glycogen. They now have a whole entire source of ketones. And so to get into ketones, to be metabolically flexible, to be in be ketosis all the time is a real win. Now they can go out on hikes and mountain hikes and so on and so forth, something that was unimaginable for that particular condition. Frederick's ataxia, it's a whole different thing. It's a rare disease, it's a mutation that ketones works around. And so it's no longer insulin ketone, uh, insulin glucose dependent. So that was the beginning of what I thought you should know it's like the world is far bigger than cognitive decline. So those people who are in cognitive decline right now, it's because they got there after decades of a, a high carb diet and um, 
Anyways, it's a shot in the arm. I wanted to leave you with that. It's just something that is conversational with me. It's very important. We will then start building on after this. What do you do? What's the next non-ketone based thing that you do to add on to this to further reduce, to more definitely reduce cognitive decline, whether it's Alzheimer's, dementia, or any of these actually that we've been talking about. And after that, we have yet one more level, which is going to be about neurotransmitters. Let me give you a picture of a local fisherman here. Howdy. Looks like you're having fun. I'm trying to. <laughs> I think you're succeeding. That's where we live, and I was hoping to have something spectacular on the, on the water to, to show you, such as the birds, which are usually there. They're pretty quiet right now. Um, there's a few uh, sunsets, uh, sunrises that I've thrown in here because you get some spectacular sunrises here. I don't know why that is, but it's just mind blowing. You'll see them coming up and then a reference to uh, Roxy, of course. Till next time, bye bye. Roxy, come on. Come on, Roxy. Yeah, what do you think of that one, Roxy? So if you're wondering what I'm feeding Roxy, it's kind of evolved from mealworms that were hard to hold to still uh, chicken breast slices that are very small. And this is leftover beef slices that are very small. And uh, so she gets her protein. We're, we're big protein people here. <laughs> you know. She's on, um, she's on the pro protein sparing modified fast as well. Of course, I can't speak to what else she has in her life. For all we know, it's high fat fish eggs or something. But she gets her protein. This is, this is her protein stop. Yeah, got it. Okay. I just want to say, if this is something you're really interested in, as I am, you might be really interested in following some of these videos. Take care. Till next time.